That's her. Which one? The one on the right. Don't stare. Why not? Because she'll see. Good. You must let her see the fire in your eyes. But what would I say? Words come later. It is the scent that first speaks of love. Thanks, Worf. That helps a lot. Welcome back to Fully Functional, a Teen G podcast. I'm Maggie, joined by Jeff and Dory. Yo. Jeff and I are huge Star Trek nerds, and Dory is a Star Trek novice. And we are taking her on her first journey through Star Trek The Next Generation. Today we'll be discussing the Season 3 episode, Transfigurations. Original air date, June 2nd, 1990. And as always, we'll take it to Dory for the recap. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay. So um, we start off. The Enterprise is charting an unexplored star system within the Zeta Galus cluster. Oh, very important. And they, mm-hmm. yeah, super. Um, everybody needs to know. <laughs> and they have some quiet time, which means Jordy is in ten forward with Worf, and he's got a new crush on a woman named Christy. Him and Worf have a really fun exchange. <laughs> Worf's dialogue in this episode is fucking fire, but I yeah. really got a criticism for saying you must let her see the fire in your eyes while talking to the blind guy. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even think yeah, about that. Yeah, that didn't even oh my occur god. to me. Oh my god, I'll just, like, okay. Not even that he's blind, but that he has a visor blocking his eyes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, oh god. Okay, so Jordy. Jordy's got a crush. He points her out to Worf. And then Jordy goes, that's her. Worf goes, which one? Jordy goes, the one on the right. Don't stare. And then Worf goes, why not? Jordy goes, because she'll see. And then Worf goes, good. You must let her see the fire in your eyes. And then Jordy goes, but what would I say? And then Worf says, words come later. It is the scent that first speaks of love. Oh, God. (laughs) And then Jordy goes, thanks, Worf. That helps a lot. (laughs) So um, Christy does come up to Jordy and Worf, and she says hello, and she's like, how's it going? Uh, how are things in engineering? And Jordy just, like, fucks it. Yeah. <laughs> he, it's really awkward. He can he can barely speak. Yeah, she's obviously into him, and he just yeah. <laughs> completely fumbles the pass. Like, he oh, just... Jordy. <sighs> so, yeah, it's really awkward. <laughs> then Worf goes, I have much to teach you about women. <laughs> dead oh my god yeah fucking excellent so then like jordy's called away because like a small one-man ship has crashed wait wait crash on the planet what did i write this wrong fuck i think i did whatever anyways there was like a, <laughs> a pod a skate pod thing or whatever that's floating around they pick up the humanoid life signs oh no they did crash on the planet i am right haha it did cl- crash on a planet and so then uh, Jordy, Data, Riker, and Dr. C go down to the Rocky Mountains, apparently, <laughs> and find a guy with, like, half his face melted off, like, Two-Face, Harvey Dent in the Dark Knight <laughs> styles. Yeah, you could see his teeth. And uh, so they take him up. Oh, oh, first, okay, he's not like, actually stable to travel to sick bay. So, like, Dr. C's like, we need to, like, stable him, whatever, and, like, we need somebody to, like, I don't know, do something with his nervous system or stabilize his nervous system. We need so another she- brain to run his body, basically. Yeah. So she attaches Jordy basically to him with like these sensor things. And she's like, Jordy, it can break the connection if this gets like too fucking weird or whatever. And um, just like deep breaths. So she brings him up to treat him. I think he was like in an escape pod and like phaser what had like fire had like occurred recently and whatever so dr c is like treating him he needs like arm restoration and like he's got head and chest trauma but unrelated to like those issues he's got this like like his cell regeneration is going to absolute town on itself and Mm -hmm. they're like this is really weird because it's the undamaged cells that seem to be like mutating but then they also have this like glowing blue cylind 
jar. I don't know. That is not that they got from the pod, and it's not. Wait a minute. Do we? We don't even think we ever deal with that. Yeah, I we do. No, oh wait. Oh yeah, we did. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh my god, this episode <laughs> is so like. There's so little to remember about this episode, and it just doesn't stand out in any way whatsoever. Yeah. It also just took me a really long time to get through this episode. That like this stuff is from last night, and who remembers what I what from last night? That that was last night. That was like a whole other time, a whole other day. <laughs> So, oh yeah, they discuss the thing. It's not like compatible to like enterprise computer stuff. And they're like, maybe it's like contains chemically based system for molecular energy encoding. And then I just wrote back, wrote feedback loop controller. I have no idea what the context of that is. So <laughs> anyone's guess is as good as mine. That's, that's what, what they, that's what they think the blue uh, cylinder thing is. thing is. Yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah, they discuss this in 10 forward. I forgot about that. And then Worf says, less talk, more synthanol. We came here to relax. I assume synthanol, is that like synthetic alcohol? Yeah. Syn- synthahol. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, which, honestly, I feel like that's out of character for Worf. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Less talk, more well, drinking. His character yeah. has not been sufficiently established yet, to be fair. Uh, we have seen very little Worf. And then Jordy's response to that is, I am relaxed. In fact, I have never felt better. But you know, Worf, you're right. The storage capsule can wait a while. And then he goes to Christy and he is smooth and she's like, I'm going to the Arboretum. And he's like, I'll come too. And it's like, yeah, you will. <laughs> <laughs> so then, oh yeah, it's been 36 hours. Uh, timeline <laughs> yeah. Lulz, means nothing. Um, and his organs Especially have like regenerated or whatever. Yeah, the time time means nothing in this episode. So he's like, they, they've called this guy John Doe, classic. Mm-hmm. And then he says, when he's like conscious, he says to Dr. C, thank you for my life. Which like, isn't that what Lol said to Data? Yes. Yeah. So like, did the same person write this? Because it's such a specific <laughs> like, like term. Uh, fun fact, actually. Yes, the same person did write it. This has been his oh second script God. for the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, this guy needs to stop using that line because it was like mel- meant a lot for like data and mm-hmm. law. But this, I immediately recognized this line, and I don't remember anything. He, he was going <laughs> for a Jesus thing, clearly for this, and I don't well, think he succeeded. Uh, no, no, no. Especially since the the whole ending of it ends up being that, like, we won't get into it yet, obviously. But the whole ending end, ends up being that their whole species is turning into Jesus is so, you know, yeah, whatever. We won't get into it, but we'll spoil it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry if you haven't seen the episode yet. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then like, Oh, so he like tries to walk. They have this like motor oh, assist bands. Wait, it's like I'll cut to one month later. <laughs> oh yeah. They're also oh, like, yes, that's right. It's a full month later. Yeah. This episode takes place over the course of almost two months. Yeah. It does? Yep. <laughs> what? Okay, I don't even think I realized that there was a month later in between the last scene and that scene. They mention it in dialogue and, like, it's all in yeah, passing. Yeah, but I wasn't watching this episode, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> like, in passing, there is so much of, well, you've been here almost a month, or it'll yeah. take us three weeks to get to this planet. Oh, yeah, I remember that, that say three weeks to get to wherever. And then Dr. C says, oh, you're six weeks ahead of schedule of your healing. So, okay, like, whatever. So they're like a month later. Wild. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, John Doe is like walking a bit and he's got his like, he, oh, he has no memory. He's got amnesia. And he, <laughs> so he tries to walk and like collapses on Dr. C then he like walks around the chair and then collapses and Picard catches him. And like, he only remembers since he was admitted to sick bay, but then like he gets these like pains where he like glows and shit. And then Riker is waiting for the lift and the doors open and Jordy is making out with Christy. Mm -hmm. Um, And Jordy has really been feeling himself lately. As well as Christy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Could it have to do with the fact that he interacted with John Doe, who glows? Whoa. We'll find, we'll find out after these messages. No, just kidding. So, oh, I want oh, yeah. messages. Then, the truly. Okay, here's the message. 
don't kayak in the holodeck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, for the record, that's that uh, the... <laughs> that's an ongoing joke, specifically with uh, with O'Brien, that he likes yeah. to go kayaking on the holodeck, and it seems like every time he mentions it, it's because he pulled a muscle or or broke his arm or something. Yeah. Yeah, because he walks in in a full out wetsuit and he's like, I was kayaking in the holodeck again. And I wrote, again? How often do you do this? Dummy? Quite often. What, what are you? How, what is he doing in the like? How, how is he doing this? How is he constantly getting hurt? What kind of water is he like wanting to kayak on? Oh, he and likes to go like, down rapids. God, my God. Yep. It's not even real and he still hurts himself. That's right. <laughs> well, of course, he turns off the holodeck safeties. Uh, wild so then he yeah oh he's got a dislocated shoulder and then wes comes in in uniform and i was like "Ooh, mm-hmm. yay for wes look how adorable he looks <laughs> and then and then <laughs> o'brien like he's sitting there he's waiting a good two seconds to be like seen <laughs> by anybody and he yells hey dog i'm dying out here because as one can obviously die of a dislocated shoulder um, and he's been there five seconds. It's also like she is attending to him. She's just grabbing something. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, my, I literally wrote in my notes, Jesus fucking Christ, O'Brien, <laughs> sit the fuck down. Okay. To be fair, this de- episode, because it takes place over the course of two months, for all you know, between those two scenes was like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then like. John Doe is like he's bored in sick bay, so he goes over to like O'Brien and he like heals his shoulder, and everybody's like, "Whoa!" So if he healed O'Brien's shoulder, did he fix Jordy's confidence problem? <laughs> but then I also wrote, "Did Jordy have a confidence problem?" <laughs> well, with women, uh, yeah. But like in general, it seems like Jordy's confidence, like he's like absolutely killing it. He just feels confident in like his stuff at work. And just, like, Jordy's having a great time. Mm-hmm. Let's be fair. His last ex-girlfriend was programmed on the holodeck, okay? So you gotta <laughs> you gotta remember oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's making Wes eat his words from, like, the other episode. <laughs> <laughs> now who's reading a good book, Wesley? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so then, like, Dr. C and Wes have dinner, and, I'm sorry, like, I don't know if this is a normal thing, but to, like, ask your mom about her, like, feelings about her patient. Yeah, that was a little weird. kind of, yeah, yeah, he's like, oh, so, like, ha- yeah, th- it's really awkward. They're, like, he's, like, tiptoeing around asking if she's got feelings for John, but it's, like, this doesn't seem like a conversation between a mother and a son. Mm-hmm. And like, why? Um, like Wes, uh, I'm not opposed to like some gossip, but this also just feels like Wes, number one, that's like, I don't know, that feels weird. But then Dr. C's like, yeah, I'm attracted to him. And like, maybe I'm into him. But it might just be the false sense of intimacy that occurs between like a patient and doctor. And like, What? Like, number one, like, there's so many issues with that. Like, (laughs) number one, why are you telling your son this guy's attractive? Number two, full out is just like talking about the false intimacy between a patient and a doctor. And then like, which honestly I never thought about before, but now I'm like, ooh. This episode has a problem with its own characters. Yeah, Yeah. this is not Dr. C's episode to shine, I'll say. Like, she does great, like, professionally, but like, other stuff, not not so much yeah yeah so this is like weird okay i think she says that they have a spiritual connection and i was like uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh-oh. um i wrote something but i don't know what the word is <laughs> oh i think i just wrote er oh <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was a different letter at the end but i just am a very messy writer okay so then jordy goes to data to like with the capsule and trying to like analyze what the hell's going on with it the mechanical properties and they're like, what if it's a biochemical storage medium? And they're like, hey, computer, analyze this shit for molecular sequences on n- nucleic acid chains. And then they find it's a navigational chart or something. Yeah. Yeah, that was strange. I don't really know how we get there. It's a lot of words I don't understand. But like, hey, we got there. We got there somehow. Well, basically, it's a DNA computer. It has like... 
biological goo in it Ew. that Ew. <laughs> acts as the storage storage for the computer. Gross. So, Which, yeah. for the record, uh, is something <laughs> somewhat based in real science, but they yeah. didn't do it very well here. Yeah. It's like our fingerprints to get into our phone. Mm. <laughs> no, not at no. all. No. Um. It's uh, okay. Essentially, like uh, a computer is a series of pathways for electrical uh, signals to go back and forth, and um, the the nature of uh, of organic material is that you can change it so that those pathways are closer together and whatnot. So you could, in theory. Uh, develop an organic computer that will uh, you'll be able to mold in order to uh, work faster at the particular kinds of calculations and things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's kind of like a little bit how the vaccine works in that it like it basically like how the COVID vaccine works is it writes instructions into your immune cells essentially. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what this is. It, they wrote instructions onto this organic goo so that they can use it as a computer. Classic. Yeah. So, okay, they basically find out, they're able to figure out, like, the original flight path, which was 2.3 parsecs away. Picard wants to return John to his home. John is like, no thanks, hard pass. Mm. Um, he seems to, that he was, like, escaping from something, um, but he maybe wasn't alone. Gasp. And then... Oh, they're like, oh, we'll be back in that star system in three weeks. And then he gets like an energy pulse again of like yellow light. And oh, I think people getting along blows John's mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's in 10 forward with Dr. C and he's just like, I can't believe people are hanging out and people are having a nice time. Also, John's in a white turtleneck bodysuit. Yeah. Yes. Which um, I would be remiss if I did not mention sporting the ultimate dick hoof. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's a wild hoof is what he is. Yeah. We're bringing back the dick hoof. <laughs> <laughs> it, looks that he at it looks like he's at least wearing a dance belt, which like saves us from a lot of unfortunate stuff. <laughs> um, a dance belt basically just smooths the bulge. <laughs> Depends on the scene, but I noticed in some cases that bulge once uh, was not too smooth. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't Welcome looking. to Bulge Corner. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> too late. Okay, so Dr. C and John are in 10 forward. She's, like, really happy for their friendship. And he's like, yeah, I'm, like, having a great time, too. But, like, I feel like I have some kind of, like, larger goal that I need to deal with um before i can like pursue anything with you and i was like Ugh, like no <laughs> this, this doesn't seem like a good idea yeah like john seems fine but yeah i can't tell you what kind of rewrites this story got but i can tell you that it was originally conceived as a love story for beverly and it seems like only bits and pieces of that survived thank god yeah, because yeah. I am not a fan of this kind of like. I'm always a fan of a like. I I for the most part, I'm always happy to like have a love story, but like there are some lines that are not that I do not want crossed. Yeah, and like patient doctor patient shit is like it's the power dynamic. It's bad. Mm -hmm. yep. Don't do it. <laughs> Okay, so then, like, Worf um, gets a reading of a vessel and, like, the long-range scanners, and they're, like, traveling real fast at uh, warp 9.72, and they will intercept them in 10 hours and 53 minutes. <laughs> oh. Well, they're coming from really far away. Yeah. So, like, he, Worf keeps trying to... Picard tells Worf to, like, keep trying to, like, hail the vessel every 30 minutes, which is, like, oh, that's a lot of times for 10 hours and 53 minutes yeah. to like keep having to hail so like john has another like light thing he's straight out having a bad time he's in like a lot of pain mm -hmm. um and he's like i should probably like leave and so like he goes to like one of like the i guess exit bay things whatever it's called the what is it called um shuttle bays 
Oh, yeah, shuttle bay, yeah. And he goes to this control panel, and he, like, open. He opens the doors to fucking space, and nobody is like, hey, guys, maybe we should close that. Uh, there's, a, there's a force field. But still, there's space <laughs> right there. But nobody closes the door either way. Everybody just is like, what? So Worf goes up. Um, oh, yeah, Dr. C calls, like, security. So Worf goes up to John, and he's like, this is, like, bad. You, like maybe like let's like come back i don't want to hurt you and john like shines too hard and um <laughs> knocks wharf over the rail and like lands on the floor so like he drops a good like ugh, i don't know measurements but like basically a floor yeah no wait does that make sense like a story like a story yes that's the word i was looking for yeah but he lands like real fucking badly and then there dr c everybody's real chill about this but she's like oh his neck is broken and no life signs <laughs> i was like wait what the fuck oh, like, dead. what oh. well like everybody was very chill about this <laughs> yeah. and then dr c's like quick form a recitation group or whatever resuscitation a resuscitation team and then i just wrote <laughs> save wharf immediately yeah <laughs> um and then john comes down and he like touches wharf and transfers like i don't know the light to wharf and then wharf wakes up and he's completely healed so yay thanks john for fixing the problem he caused yeah yeah so then John Picard and Dr. C have a conversation. John's like, I really want to leave. I'm like dangerous. I don't want to put people at risk. And then Jordy thanks John for his like newfound confidence. And it's like, well, maybe you really had it in you all along. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, are, thanks. <laughs> are you forgetting the line that, that Beverly says like three seconds after that, which is, uh, I don't believe you're capable of harming anyone after oh, yeah. scanning after dead wharf. <laughs> He basically kill, almost killed Worf. Well, he did kill Worf, yeah, technically. He yeah. briefly killed Worf. Yeah, Dr. C's got to make some judgment issues in this episode. Yeah. So then we finally uh, catch up with the this other ship, the vessel that's, like, been trying to catch up with them or whatever. The USB stick and ship. We meet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we meet Sunad, whatever. And John's like, he's dangerous. Oh, Sunad is from, like, Zalcon, whatever. And Zalcon's like, oh, you guys are, like, trespassing in our space. We want John back. And then, like, gasp! Sunad reveals that John is one of four prisoners who escaped. And he's, like, a criminal. And they're like, okay, so, like, what's his what's his deal? What did he do? And that's his crimes. <laughs> and then Sunad's, like, disruptive influence spreads lies, encourages dissent. <laughs> <laughs> disruptive uh, disturbs the natural order of our society and i just wrote classic john yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like apparently the uh zalconians are like scared of john um he has like some kind of bigger purpose and he's like i'll surrender to them to like save the enterprise and picard's like yeah obviously you have like a bigger plan um you've got some other shit that you gotta do a higher power stuff than like a simple criminal and i don't know everybody's like freak everybody from like that planet is freaked out by him that they don't understand what his like shit is and but also they're like oh the zalconians think that like enterprise shouldn't be involved interesting um because it really has nothing to do with them mm -hmm. and it's like okay yeah sort of yeah <laughs> uh and then dr c is like okay but like i saved his life so how can we go give him a way to be like killed there and it's like hey dr c like i love you but like that's truly not how anything ever works like i think of p people who are like literally on death row like they will make them healthy so they can execute them yeah. <laughs> so like your your like logic of like well they can't kill him because i just healed him like that doesn't doc that doesn't matter that's nobody nobody cares about that it wasn't so much that she's like well i healed him so you can't kill him it was more like why like, did i heal him if you're gonna, if you're gonna kill him no it, it's just like um like i saved this man's life and we're gonna turn him over just so he can die again yeah, yeah. i mean but it's still like it doesn't the, the, the like logistics of everything in this episode does not make a lot of sense to me yeah and then uh, Picard is like stalling 
<laughs> and he says to Sunad, he's like, oh, we are on a mission uh, to establish peaceful relations with civilization. And Sunad's like, yeah, we don't give a shit. We don't fucking want your relations. Like, fuck <laughs> off. Just give us John. And then Picard is like, hey, just so you know, like, John has healing powers. And Sunad's like, bullshit. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then, oh, give me a moment. I wrote, I didn't want to use the page, so I wrote my notes sideways in <laughs> margins. So fun times. Um, you always regret oh, that decision. <laughs> I know. I do that every single time. But I was like, Ugh, new page? At what cost? <laughs> my sanity, apparently. So then, oh, my God. Sunad just like this bitch takes like the entire ship literally in a chokehold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so then John, like, goes over to Dr. C, saves her, and then they, like, save another guy, and then he, like, touches the ship, and, like, everybody can breathe again. Yay! But but he's the one who caused the problem. Yeah, but he saved everybody, so... Great! Yay! Well, he's not the one that choked everybody. No, no I know that, but, like, he, yeah. it's it's him causing all this shit, and the, the, the whole reason for doing that is so that he can heal everyone. Like, it's just, the script is so by the numbers. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So then um, John brings Ned onto the bridge. And, oh, where's where's point number three? Uh, okay, there's four. There's five. Where did I write number three? Oh, my God. There, oh, there's three. Okay, where's four? Okay. This is what happens. Apologies. So then, like, oh, so, okay. So John does remember some shit after, like, he's healed everybody. And he's like, we're my species is on the verge of like a wondrous evolutionary change, a transmutation beyond our physical being. And the first of his kind to approach this metamorphosis. And then Snyder's is like, oh, they're dangerous and they should be killed with anyone who's got like signs of transfiguration. And so like, cool. Oh, oh, that's that's the name of the episode. Hey. Starting to see an allegory. Only took the whole episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, John, like, fled the planet with, like, his uh, the other people of his species to survive. And there was, like, they, they like, just enough time for him to barely explain his stuff before turning into fucking Slenderman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Glowing Slenderman. And then, it's so creepy. He just becomes, like, a bumpy, <laughs> I wrote, bumpy white bodysuit head to toe. <laughs> with glowing yellow Fun fact about that i i'm not sure why they made this choice but that that whole bodysuit effect was almost completely in camera it was like a it was like a reflective material that he was wearing and like okay oh. that's that's all fine and dandy but it looks bad yeah it looks terrible so don't be then, proud of that yeah uh so then like from john's explanation it really sounds like he's starting a cult which like on the nose <laughs> So they send Sinad back to his vessel and he's like, peace, I'm out of here. And then I wrote, Slender John (laughs) touches Dr. C's face. (laughs) (laughs) And he says goodbye. And then he turns into a star and leaves. And yeah, yeah, what the fuck happened? (laughs) What is this episode? (laughs) So I'm actually a little bit confused about the allegory. Either he's Jesus or... His species is going through an X Men like transformation, and he's <laughs> so Professor, Professor X. X. <laughs> well, I think that's what it is. I think like they're they're, they're sp- going X Men style. <laughs> yeah, the, their species is going X Men style, and uh, yeah, <laughs> he's going to start uh, start the uh, the X Men. He's going to go recruit. He needs to go find a mansion. I got to say, um, Patrick Stewart, despite being in both, definitely plays a much better Professor X than this guy does. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I wonder why. (laughs) Uh, I mean, he was right there. He could have asked for his. I mean, I know this is before uh, Patrick Stewart played Professor X. Why couldn't he just play both parts? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) I would watch Patrick Stewart act alongside Patrick Stewart, wouldn't you? Yes. There we go. I mean, we have. Uh, we have, I think. <laughs> when we, had, we had faux card. Oh, yes. But, oh, no. Very good point. Uh, yeah, the more Picard, the better. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, this episode was something. <laughs> so apparently the plan behind this episode, because this isn't the first time that Star Trek has done a transcendent species thing. I think it, is this the first time TNG's done it? I think so. But TOS did it a couple of times, and one of the movies did it. And it was, um, it, it, it was never really explored from this angle is the way that they went about it. That, that like the final transformation angle where they're like, they're not sure what they're going through. Things are changing and whatnot. And, uh, they always did a, they have already transcended or this is only beginning and I'm so confused. So the, the writer was trying to cover it from like a, th this is a change that has been happening for some time. We're reaching like an apex of it and we need to deal with that. The problem is they spent so much time on the other parts of the episode that they didn't deal with that. So the episode is incredibly ineffective at its own idea. Oh, 100%. There's so mm -hmm. much time like just bullshitting around basically that they just have to cram the point in right at the end. Yeah, I mean, also, like, I guess this also this episode falls into the um, prime directive issue sec thing again of like, should they, even though like, yeah, they w they'd be sending this guy to die, but like, this is not a civilization they're like connected with yet, mm. and like they didn't the people like the they say like that the people were scared of these people. And Sunad is like, yeah, uh, hand him over. We don't fucking want your relations. <laughs> we don't want to be part of your Federation nonsense. Well, he doesn't say that, but basically. So, I don't know. Where does that fall? That's an interesting question because this, this species is as capable technologically as, uh, as the Federation is. So, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think there's a non-interference rule. Because the, the the prime directive states that they don't interfere in other cultures that like haven't reached a point yet, and they kind of apply it inconsistently to other races that are having internal problems. Sometimes they'll help them with them if they ask. Sometimes they won't. Because this is a situation where they are not asking, and they do not want to have anything to do with the Federation, right? And like they make it very clear. So like, but it 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 complicates matters that John is essentially asking for asylum. So yes. they they don't want to turn him over, you mm. know. Yeah, because they are obliged to grant him asylum if he asks for it. Yeah. Why? Because they're the Federation. <laughs> Is this something that like occurs like often? Asking in, like, for the asylum? Star Trek universe? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean it's something that happens in our universe. Oh no, I know that, but I just mean in terms of like um like people who are not like groups that are maybe not part of the Federation. Yes. Or like they're cuz this kind of seems like um yeah, it's uh, it, I guess political prisoner situation. Yeah, it's definitely a reoccurring plot device. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. But it, it mm -hmm. makes sense. He is like, uh, he is considered like he's in danger due to like political reasons and stuff. And that is like a, that's like one of the criteria for being granted asylum is if you like, mm -hmm. like there's many ways you can qualify for asylum, at least like in terms of real world stuff, I know. And one is that like you would be like, a political prisoner or in danger because of your politics. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's tricky, but I don't think it's not like they're blatantly breaking the prime directive here. Mm -hmm. It is interesting that they didn't bring it up though. As I think they actually mention it for like a quick second or something, or maybe I make, I'm making that up completely, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, it's, uh, they might I always find it's interesting. Like, I'm on the side of, like, yeah, don't, like, <laughs> don't pass him over. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, he, yeah, he, like, it's funny, because, like, on the ship, he is actually a danger <laughs> to yeah. other people. Technically, yes. But he does, but he does, like, fix them of the injury he's caused. Yeah, it's, the thing is, is, like, he's not intentionally causing harm. Yeah. It's yeah. something he can't you know really control. You know what I thought was interesting, though, is, like, everybody else seems to have, like, something, like, physical injury, 
Except for Jordy. Like, Jordy's confidence is like. Well, Jordy was hooked up with the guy's brain directly. Yeah. So maybe that's like different. Oh, his nervous system gave him the confidence. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Well, as the guy yeah. says, it's like, maybe I just helped you find something that was already there. Yeah. It's interest- interesting of, like, how, what the extent of this guy's powers are. Mm-hmm. Like, because there really isn't a defined know. scope. Well, it basically turns into Q at the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except Q's outfits are less scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at least Q has a face. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> This guy, you know, that kind of reminded me of the Slender John, if you yeah. if you will. <laughs> um, there's an episode of Community where they like are putting together a mascot. Oh it's in yeah. Season one, and they just have this guy dressed in like the white bodysuit, but they draw like a creepy face on him yeah. and like <laughs> and, like the, marker or something. Yeah. The human beings. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This gave me. Um, ironically human being vibes wild this episode is like a big scoop of like nothing honestly yeah I mean I think like there's something there that could have been interesting but like I really don't like the like Dr. C like having feelings for this guy dynamic Mm -hmm. like it's weird it just feels super inappropriate and I wouldn't have like thought about that coming from Dr. C. Yeah, and there really isn't, like, there's also, they don't really give us, they don't show us anything that shows that they do have, like, a connection with each other. Like, I yeah. I feel the chemistry there. Um, like, I, I think it's, uh, I think they are into each other, like, but it's, like, Why? Yeah, they spend yeah. more time telling us that they're interested in each other than showing us why they're interested in each other. Yeah. Because there's no development in their relationship. There's massive time skips. And it doesn't seem like they're any closer, like, the farther down we go. Also, why did why did they choose Wes to be the person for Dr. C to confide that she's, like, into John? That's a great That's question. Weird. I don't know. Because, like, why would, like, that feels like it would be a Troy thing because they've talked about, like, relationship stuff in the past. She's not even in this So for episode. her to be like, she is. Oh, is she? She's in, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's, she says that, like, the, um, the Zalconians, like, oh, are, yes. are scared of him and whatever. And she's in the background for some stuff. But, great. like, so she's in this episode. They could have utilized her for literally her whole role. But instead, they're like, hey, let's get Wes in there to, like, have some hot goss with his mom. Nice. <laughs> I think I think what they're going for is that, like, look, in the future, like, parents and their children can have honest, open conversations with each other. That's possible, yeah. The way it's written, and listen, I am team Will Wheaton all the way. The acting, really not solid in this scene. No. Yeah. Um, the way it's delivered it's, is so awkward. I feel it's like it's really weird. Maybe Will Wheaton just didn't believe the lines. Yeah, probably. I could see because I Wesley didn't. Would, would ask his mom <laughs> what her love life situation is. <laughs> mom, have you been ovulating lately? Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, it's very weird. Just. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Is there is there uh, is there any interesting background corner stuff? Not really. I've I've mentioned everything about it. There's very little background to this episode. It seems like everybody had a fine time making it and they just considered the episode to be fine. And that's about it. It. It, the the messaging behind it is not particularly meaningful, even for Star Trek. It's not really an allegory that has any real world significance in a way that um, that that adds anything profound to the discussion. So, mm-hmm. like the the thoughts behind the episode are: we like doing episodes about transcendence. Let's do one. Oh look, we think we covered a different part of transcendence than. Uh, than normally we do, but we spent more of the episode trying to make you give a shit about this character and having fun with our other characters that we missed the point, the end. Mm-hmm. And that's that's it. Uh, I don't know 
what this particular writer contributed to Star Trek after this. Um, I remember a little bit from reading The Offspring that they perhaps didn't end up sticking around too long. Um, and I don't know if that was due to just other scripts not making the cut in his case. Like maybe he got lucky one time. I did notice when we were watching The Offspring, just to take it back to that, that uh, there were parts of that episode that while I really enjoy the episode overall, I recall there being parts where I felt like things were slightly out of character. Mm. And I'm wondering if maybe his idea of what the crew was just didn't mesh super well. Because he, he got Jordy, uh, uh, sorry, he got Jordy and, uh, and Data down great in that episode. Mm-hmm. But he wasn't really focusing as much on many of the other characters that are shining in this one. And I think perhaps I think just Worf is totally off. Yeah, I episode. think, I think you're Dr. Right. C is off. <laughs> Worf is very much like season one Worf in that he's pretty much just one-liners this episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and and getting killed briefly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> won't be the first time, won't be the last time. Um, no, Worf. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, I, I think this guy maybe just didn't, mesh with the characters he was writing for this time and to be fair there are plenty of other writers within star trek who have written like amazing hits like uh melinda snodgrass who wrote um what is it uh who wrote measure of a man who also wrote absolute stinkers for the show and Mm -hmm. it's just Mm -hmm. not everybody is on all the time that's just how it is oh yeah well, I bet if the person, this guy, wrote a third episode, he'd find some way to throw in "Thank you for my life" in there. <laughs> oh, I could see it. <laughs> That's just like every every episode he writes, he throws that line in somewhere. Uh, well, I do remember that line coming up in the future. So, uh, what? We'll see. Oh we'll see. God, it is in a very good uh situation but i won't go into it um so i suppose with that we should get into uh favorite moments and lines and things of that nature yeah Uh... i'm down uh wait holy shit um okay so i i just want to point this out but the other episode where that's used i won't go into any details about it but yes he absolutely uses that line again (laughs) and it's and it it, yes it's him it's him Oh my god. Yes. He's responsible for 18 episodes of TNG and honestly, there's some bangers in here. So, mm. I'm going to I'm going to chalk this up to <laughs> this wasn't a great outing and it's it looks like it's one of his few not great outings. So yeah, there's well, some there's some real classics in here. I guess welcome to our new recurring corner. Thank you for my life corner. Hey, there we go. <laughs> He ended up moving on to uh, to DS9 after this as well, actually, where he was responsible for 23 episodes. Oh, neat. Also, oh, some, God, how also many... some pretty decent ones. How many of those say thank you for my life? None that I can remember, but don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've gone through DS9 as well. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Um, favorite moments. Uh, I liked Jordy and Worf at the beginning when Jordy like, points out his crush, Christy, to Worf. Yeah. Um, that exchange was, like, pretty funny. Worf's, like, uh, you must let her see the fire in your eyes. And uh, <laughs> words come later. It is the scent that first speaks of love. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, oh, oh, I, I did get a good laugh out of O'Brien yelling, Hey, Doc, I'm dying here with his dislocated shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that he got hurt kayaking again mm-hmm. <laughs> is very funny to me. That white bodysuit that John wears is very funny. Um, it's got some really nice detailing in like the chest, mm-hmm. but otherwise, man, what a ride that that <laughs> outfit was. <laughs> um, and I think that's it. Like, there wasn't a ton that I like really liked in this episode. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. I think my favorite moments are all basically the same ones as yours, uh, especially that that scene at the beginning, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, same here. Mm-hmm. Oh, I will say, okay, my other, this isn't necessarily a favorite moment, but it is a little bit low-key favorite-ish. All of the times they mentioned, like, times, mm-hmm. like, uh, You mean the ones you forgot about when like, I brought them up? 
well yeah but they say like three weeks 10 hours like they just have so many different time frames mentioned in this episode (laughs) and none of them mean anything to me Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh so good what if what is time (laughs) let's move on to the real crown jewel of this session Oh. predictions for the next episode oh so the next episode is the season finale and Ooh. it's the first time we get what we would think of as a season finale so the episode is called the best of both worlds part one <laughs> and <laughs> Your tidbit is, it's the return of the Borg. (gasps) Oh, shit. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. (gasps) Oh, my God. Okay, wait. The best of both worlds. The Hannah Montana reference has to be acknowledged and now put aside. Uh. (laughs) Oh, my (laughs) God. This predates that by like 15 years. Come on. No, I know. I know. No, I'm not saying that it's like a reference to it. It's just I can't help but like think think of of Hannah Montana. I don't know why. I didn't really watch Hannah Montana, but that theme song, it gets around, you know. Okay. Okay. I have sort of something. Because like the Borg are, they like, they're plugged in to shit right so like what if what if they get like they take data because maybe they think like data has like a bunch of this knowledge and stuff that he's got from starfleet but also the way that he can absorb knowledge would maybe be like a way for if data gets plugged into their system then he can like share his knowledge and shit with them so maybe the borg kidnap data mm. and that they're trying to get data back because he's also like then giving all like starfleet secrets and shit or just confidential shit oh may- or maybe like I, f- I don't know why i feel like this is data related but like um or data centric it just like because i suppose also there's like what well best of both worlds oh maybe it's wharf because maybe the I almost said the Kryptons. Oh my god, I've been watching too much Smallville. Um, <laughs> um, the Klingons. <laughs> my god. The Klingons, like, maybe try to, like, open their arms up to Worf for something. To try to, like, be like, or you could be part of us. Or you could go back to the Enterprise. Or you could be with us. Oh, I'm going, I'm going, I don't know. I don't know what to settle. This is very, this is, it's very vague. Mm-hmm. And I have like too much leeway here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to leave it open so that you could go like as outlandish as you want. Ooh. Uh, I know. You know what though? I gotta be honest. I can't imagine the way they've been treating Worf that they would give him to be the main character in a season finale. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna be honest. I can't imagine they'd ha- let him. They'd have him do that this early. Uh, even though it's end of season three, Data seems more likely. But also, then that doesn't make sense of the title. Oh, God, this is hard. The title is, like, not not the most informative of what the episode is. Okay, so maybe I'll just... I don't have any other... I have nothing else in my head about this. It's like, it's so... So I'll, I'll just go with my data thing of, like, data is... Maybe they hear about something about data and like they want him for his knowledge so they can get like background shit on the federation and starfleet and stuff okay okay cool yeah rescue mission to save data yeah (laughs) (laughs) sounds good well if you'd like to see if dory's right watch along with us and join us for the next episode of fully functional a tng podcast goodbye